Hello friends, welcome back to our uh, database tutorial series and welcome back to our YouTube channel Software Circle where we discuss different technologies and different people share their experience. So today I, I thought that I will discuss once again about uh, databases and my name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft USA as a senior software engineer. So if you see the ranking of the data say, uh, databases by used in this March, we will see that top used database is Oracle and then MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server and then others, right? So in previous video, we did install Microsoft SQL Space on one of our VMs. In this, we are going to see that what other options we have if we wanted to go into Azure Cloud, right? So if we go into Azure Cloud Portal and go to create a resource section and then you can go and see the database section. So here you can find couple of more than couple of options. Azure SQL Managed in some instance you can find Azure SQL, SQL databases you can find. Cosmos DB is um, the another option. Then you can have managed service for PostgreSQL and MySQL also. Right now, we have this, uh, this we are going to focus on SQL. In previous video, you in, we installed SQL Express. If you have any license of enterprise or you want to go with fully managed, uh, fully on-prem kind of, uh, then you can uh, go and install on that uh, VM. But if you do not want to manage your VM, but still want to use that kind of flexibility which you were getting into uh, your VMs or your local installation of SQL Server, then you have an option called Azure SQL Managed Instance. So what is that Azure Managed SQL Instance, right? Let's see that one. So Azure Managed SQL Instance is the server they fully managed, managed by Azure itself. You do not have to think about virtual machine where it is installed, right? You can plug that uh, SQL Server as you are putting into your virtual network or network. Uh, you can put this one also into ne your network. You can connect using that one and then you can use this uh, manage instance as you are using as uh, one of the servers. But you do not have to maintain your VMs, underlying VMs and other things. So that is it right now. If you see which kind of uh, scenario and what is that manage instance so you see that one it can be used for lift and shift scenario right if you have any uh, application which is right now being used on sql server and if you do not want to change little bit using fully pass sql databases uh, then you can use this option and you can lift and shift that one so that is one option and if you want to alter that your code little bit and you can customize that one to use single elastic pool that is the next op option we have where uh, you do not have to pay for this manage instance also and that uh, that feature you can use we will go and create that one also later but right now we are focusing on video first part at a managed instance so this is a new deployment um, option provided by Azure, Azure so that uh, it will spin up one VM under the line and it will create all the SQL server on that one and it will be managed by Azure itself. So it can be used for easy lift and shift scenario where you can lift and shift and it is fully managed pass solution so um, uh, whatever infrastructure is that we are saying that you can do and it is fully isolated and securities. It will have on BM and you can have that in implementation uh, integration with your virtual network and you can have public IP addresses assigned to that one. So that is how it, it is fully isolated by other different Azure resources or single databases options and then you can have public IP addresses so that you can directly, uh, sorry, private IP addresses where you can directly access this one. So what are the different benefits you can give uh, get from this one, right? If you are going to open uh, a VM and install that one, then you have to think a lot of different things. Like if you want to support that 99.9 point .9 uptime, right? Then you have to spin multiple VMs and then you can set up disaster recovery, high ability, all you have to do your work. But in this case, if you are going with managed instance, it is supported by default by um, 
Azure itself so that you can configure and you can get the benefit of that one. So yeah, you do not have to purchase any hard, um, hardware. If you want to go and install a physical on the physical machine, you do not have to buy, but in VM also you have to pay for VM. So that, that kind of things are there. Then uh, for this one, um, the security and MISO compliance, we talked about that you can have VM, VNet integration, and then you can enable transparent uh, data integration feature also. You can integrate with Azure AD for security purpose. So all these things you can do, advanced threat protection is there, so that all, all we can um, uh, utilize that one. And you, we all can do using res Azure Resource Manager API, so that we can automate in dev environment, prod environment, or something like that right so that is why this this uh, this is that uh, option is best suited for where you want to lift and shift if you want to uh, develop a new application altogether this might not be fit up because you can leverage the more from, uh, uh, platform as a service azure single databases where you need only one database you do not need whole server sql server for that one or maybe you do not need virtual net um, integration so that is how you can decide that which kind of uh, uh, resources you want which kind of services do you want on that one right so that that feature we can go and discuss because there are uh, some differences between manage instance and SQL database, but we will do later. Uh, let's go and create a SQL manage instance right now. So if I go and click that one, as you know that I, I have a subscription uh, and uh, with my Visual Studio license and I have created a demo resource group for previous demo. So I will go ahead and uh, put that into that resource group. And then I will go and say that my manage service server instance name. And you, you have option to select where maybe if your application is deployed in India, then you might have, uh, uh, you need to create into India so that network does not um, take so much time. And depending upon which region you want to create that one, so you can go. And uh, then you can see that one, that how you are going to uh, customize your hardware requirement. If you want to go with general purpose, uh, this this uh, 4 to 8 B core, 32 GB uh, capacity and other things, or you have a business critical application where you can go with more super fast storage and other things. So that you can see and that uh, depending upon your selection, that cost will be there. So I want to go with only two B cores and I want to go with only two 1 GB of storage. I do not want to. The minimum we can go in 32. Still, I am going to pay $543 USD. So, I already have a SQL Server license. I do not have that one. So, um, it's okay. I do not uh, have a SQL Server license. So, I cannot use that one. But if you have an option, if you have already license, you can go ahead and do that one. I do not need right now for this purpose um, geo redundant backup storage. So, I can go with that one. And let's see what we can do more. Uh, B cores, we need a little bit. I'll give this one. So this is the cost because B core is five. One core is 142. So let me go and downgrade this one also. Can we reduce this one? No, four is minimum. We need to have that one. And 32 max uh, storage, uh, we can, we have to select that one. I can select four, five GB. It is not going to take. So that is how this charge at least uh, we can go and see that one. So I will quickly uh, select this one, this option. Uh, let me see that uh, what is the server admin password. So let me put something and I will delete this resources. So if you uh, see the password and other things, I am not going to keep um, that one. Let's see. I am going to put this into one notepad so that I can easily, when I will try to connect that one, I will easily let's use this one. And it is saying the 16 character in length. So, how uh, many we created? So, let's see 16. Okay. 16 we have to create. Oops. The 
okay next networking we we will keep right now um, same because we do not want to connect anything into on prem because i do not have any on prem machine so let me go ahead and create that one quickly uh, okay so deploying uh, managing instance long running operation can take 6 hour to complete so i will click on create this one and i will move that one um, uh, i will fast forward that one that uh, and then uh, we can see uh, uh, once it is deployed, I will uh, start my video once again. So, so friends, uh, this SQL management is instance is ready. If you see my screen, I am going to create a new database in this one. And before going to create that one, we can see that manage uh, instance name, whatever we have given the admin one. And it created a virtual cluster. So cluster and subnet and virtual network or everything is created because uh, uh, right now it has created one VA, whatever code we have decided and it was four code uh, we decided but later you can have multiple cores multiple machines so v code we have given four so that it has to scale because of um, uh, the business continuity right that or the disaster recovery scenario or uh, that uh, if you want to have a um, replication setup and other things so that that is why that that is there so failover group we can set up that one that where it is that uh, read and write we can have and uh, which will be primary instance during that work so that we can do all so let let me go and quickly try to create one database in this manage instance and how it look like so let's say that managed managed employee database let's see db and it will go into sort of software circle manage instance so let me go and create quickly and let's see how it look like so this manage instance i am creating first time uh, because this is new feature came so it might take some time so i will wait for this. so it says that database has been created so let me go ahead and see this one okay created okay so this is here if you see it came here managed employee db uh, and if we click on this one we can see the details about that one and if we try to connect let's see if i am able to connect this one from uh, ssms or not uh, that we will see uh, let's see what is that uh, so public endpoint is disabled right now so um, uh, and public endpoint we need to enable because then only we can connect using internet or either we have to set up the, um, other things on that one so i will say okay this port this is the port number where it will be enabled so i will go ahead and save that one So it says that uh, one more thing we can notice that when this it says that you need to open that 3342 port on uh, NSG. So NSG, if you have seen my video on uh, creating that uh, SQL Server Express on BM and BM configuration, we will have a NSG inside one network which we created here. So if we go to virtual network and if we go to uh, virtual network where this one and uh, subnets and this is the NSG, NSG and hyphen software circle so if we go and check that one uh, in this resource group itself and I will go and search this one this is this NSG is added so here we have to open that port so that uh, out uh, traffic will come and go through that one so i need to add one more port and it says said that okay you have to open 3342 uh, because it was running into 3342 on uh, and uh, we have to add inbound traffic so i'm going to add inbound traffic on this one and it will be this port and any port i am allowing right, right now priority is i can set up any priority so let's see and I can say a different one. Manual. So, yeah. Okay, so let um, I can go into I I can try this one using host name or like I can see that connection string. What is the connection string? This says the TCP port TCP. We should be able to connect using this one. But let me okay or ad.net it says that 
SQL authentication public endpoint is this one. So let me take grab this one and then I will put this one and let's try to connect this one. And now I am able to connect this one up. So if you see that one and uh, I am able to see this one and uh, I have, if you see right now uh, my SSMS, I have opened my old connection for SQL um, data uh, database, uh, Azure SQL database, uh, fully managed services and serverless. If you see that one, you will not find the SQL uh, server agent because that is one database we have created that we do not have a server access and you, if you want to run the jobs and other things over there, you have to create the elastic job. But in, in this scenario, you can have everything lift from existing database, the different thing, uh, your server, and then you can run that one. So if you go and create the new table itself, let me go ahead and do the same thing which we did in the last one and we can create a person table. I will create an ID and I will set up this one enumeric as a primary key and then I will go ahead and say that one this is full text and then I will enable that identity so that it will be auto generated. I will keep first name. I will create last name and I will create anything like middle name, okay? Put middle name, I do not have, but let's put middle name so that we can see that what is the difference between that to keep differentiated, okay? So now uh, if we see that one, we have another table and I can do same thing uh, for this one also. So, okay, so we do have all these things here, right? Let, let, let me go in this one and then let, let's try to run this one using this one. So we can say that using manage db instead, instead of that one and first name here, middle name is there. So I can go ahead and say middle name and then, and I do not have anything in middle name. So I can say in a, okay. So, okay, let's, let me run this command and see how what happens. So it ran this one. Let me do this one and I'm able to see this one. So if you see, this is the basic thing uh, we can, we have created that manage instance in this, uh, our uh, Azure portal and manage instance because of manage instance is created virtual cluster, virtual network and other things. But if you have seen the last video when we created fully serverless, um, Azure SQL uh, with one database, there was nothing in like virtual network and virtual cluster, but still, if you want to go ahead and put this, this one into your private network, then you can go into virtual network and you can start connecting this uh, subnets with different one or you can start doing all this activity because this, this you can do that one. Uh, so peering is that way that you can connect the two virtual network and other things so that that networking thing we can do. So this is what I wanted to show you and uh, in, in this one you can see that one that um, you have an option to in uh, for security purpose you can enable DDoS protection you can do setting a firewall you can handle the security thing from there uh, security center I will go ahead and do uh, something for security center that how it looks like uh, in next videos so uh, do the tune in uh, I will create more videos according to this one and then we will see that one what happens okay thank you thank you bye